Apologies for being late with the episode. I got lost in the murky depths of the undersea. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Crownless Eagle. In the last episode we have failed our mission to help our Saxon allies who, despite their resistance, have been occupied by Austrian forces. Because of that, Poniatowski has been recalled back to Warsaw, but he decided he wouldn't obey that order since King August can't really enforce it. Instead, Poniatowski decided to gamble and bet everything on a daring attack at Berlin itself, hoping to break Prussian spirits by taking their capital. Unfortunately, his move has been seen through by the Germans, and when he arrived at the outskirts of Berlin, he met Prussian garrison ready to receive him, as well as Austrian force led by very experienced commander racing to help the defenders. After a long and bloody battle, Poniatowski managed to overwhelm this combined enemy force and marched into Berlin, but it quickly became obvious that he needed much more manpower if he wanted to hold it. Because, despite this victory, enemy has not been broken, and they refused all offers of peace we sent them, even once where we would return their lands back to them, so we had to abandon Berlin immediately and hurry back into our lands. This proved to be a right decision, because Prussians decided to repay us for our actions by marching on Warsaw itself, and without time to prepare, the defense of our capital falls upon Potocki's militia. Let's see if they're up to this. How on earth did I get myself into this situation? I shouldn't be here. None of us should be here. This is a place for Potocki or Poniatowski and their men, and you can bet if we somehow make it through today it'll be them getting a reward. No one will thank Ratke and his pathetic band of thief-takers, even though it will be our lives on the line today. And most of us are not even soldiers, not when it comes to it. Most of the lads enlisted to finally get their own set of clothes and get two meals a day. Some are just messed up bastards who'd use their new rank to commit petty crimes. We can find some talent there, sure, but still we mostly talk about some kids from around the countryside who took their only chance of escaping poverty. And now they're here, facing one of Europe's best armies. And what for? The king, who only thinks about hunting and siring more bastards? The king who put us in this mess in the first place? Nobles, who think only about their own purses and don't even care about protecting their country? Nobles who ordered us to shoot at the crowds because people voiced some legitimate concerns. Potoski would have disagreed, but I believe that if a group of townsfolk gathers in the city square to tell us that they're starving because some bastard with a family crest decided he wouldn't pay his taxes and musket should be aimed at the noble, not at those suffering from his negligence. Ah, to hell with this! If I'm still alive this time tomorrow, I'm leaving. I've heard good things about English colonies in America. They say a man who's not afraid of some hard work can really make a living there, far away from kings and troubles they cause. I'd say it sounds better than this. Anything would be better than this. Here we are at the outskirts of Warsaw, a place where two battles were fought on the very same day. First battle is the one you see before you, a fight between Polish garrison and Prussian army, but the second, invisible war, was fought between me and the game itself. Because what you see here is my fifth attempt at this battle. It's actually proved surprisingly challenging, but unfortunately it was challenging for all the wrong reasons. Basically, every time I try to record this battle, it just crashed after about 20 minutes. Empires sometimes do this. It seems that the game doesn't really like certain battlefields, especially when zooming in a large group of units. So at this point it's middle of the night, I'm starting to get pissed off and I'm just trying to get this battle done quick before it crashes. But that's enough complaining. You can see that I've arranged my forces in a small town in the middle of the map. Prussians have a slight advantage in numbers, but mostly it's their superior troops I'm afraid of. I've hidden my men behind trenches, in case Germans decide they want to engage them in line battle, and actually I'm hoping that this will happen, because then they won't be able to set up their men properly and fire at my inferior troops with all their guns. I also have reinforcements coming onto the battlefield, Potocki and his small force, just four units, cannons, Zuan's infantry and Potocki's bodyguard. Second force is just a single unit of Albanian light infantry, who were on their way to join Poniatowski in the north, but were diverted to join the defense of Warsaw. So we'll be able to test this light infantry and see if hiring them was a good idea. But far more important is Potocki's force, because he's bringing Uans to the field, and that gives us some much-needed mobility, as well as a chance to set up some rear charges. 
Soon, the enemy responded to Potolsky's force by sending a single horse regiment to scout ahead, and I'm pulling my infantry back to draw those cavalry men as far away from the rest of their force as I can. My plan here is to wait for them to come closer, preferably out of the bushes, give them a volley, then form a square to hold them off while I move my own cavalry around. The idea here is to destroy enemy cavalry one by one, so I can then move my own horsemen wherever I want. In the meantime, Ratzke, who's in command of mortar teams, decided to focus fire on Prussian pikemen, and he's actually doing a surprisingly good job inflicting many casualties on the pikemen who now have stopped moving to reform their lines. I'm going to bombard these pikes as long as I can, because aside from enemy cavalry, they're actually the unit that can inflict most damage on my force. After a while, Prussians decided they're going to charge my front line in the town with a single unit of cavalry. Here I'm trying to get my men to the square formation, but it seems I can only order one unit to do that. The other, larger unit is apparently too big to form between buildings. But they don't have to, because as soon as I set the other unit, enemy horsemen just instantly give up. Instead, they're going to charge across the front of my men at some unspecified point further down the line, and my men can now use this opportunity to fire at this cavalry without fear of being charged. Now, I fear that they might want to attack my militia unit a bit further away, these guys here, but it seems the enemies didn't even notice this sporadic and very ineffective fire coming from that unit. Or perhaps they think fighting some militia is beneath them. I was thinking they might actually do a smart thing and attack my light infantry, so I've ordered them to deploy sharpened stakes, one use anti-cavalry obstacle most light infantry units can place. But I've realized that my men are going to deploy all their stakes at once, and that means they're going to rush from this enclosed street and try to form a long double line, so I'm ordering them back. And actually I'm going to get them out of the open and into the town. On my right flank, Prussian cavalry have been kind enough to attack my square. Not sure what they were thinking, but I'm not going to waste this opportunity. And while they're pinned down, my ones are going to rush in and deal with them. Potovsky, despite his advanced age, is also going to join this fight to show all these new young soldiers around him how it's done. Though, actually, it seems his bodyguards are aware of their commander's affinity for getting stuck in, and they form a protective ring around him, mobbing all enemies who get close to the man they're protecting. At this time I realized that enemy cavalry that went on their little adventure on my left flank came back and attacked my militia. A uh, fight my men are going to lose, so I've decided to rush my leftmost unit around enemy flank to fire at them at point-blank range. Hopefully my militia will be able to hold until then. Back to the right flank, my square, supported by Potocki's cavalry, just eliminated one Prussian horse regiment and I'm swinging them around to prepare for another fight because more enemy cavalry is approaching. In the center of my line, enemy commander, General Schlobiten, just strolled right in front of my formation, took one look at my men forming square and decided that it's not going to be as easy a victory as he expected. Further down, I'm telling my militiamen to hurry up and help their friends, who hold on surprisingly well. They're not really killing enemies, but they're making a good job of staying alive themselves. And back on the right, enemy horsemen are just going to once again charge at my square, apparently unaware that their previous attack failed. But once they get closer, they spot their now dead comrades, and their charge just stops for a second, and then they charge once again, but this time with much less resolve and impact. And now I'm going to repeat the previous operation and circle around with my cavalry. In the center, enemy forces just lost it. They dance around just a few meters away from my trenches whilst being bombarded by my men, though my infantry apparently decided to give enemy a chance and fire most of their muskets into the sky, because despite firing at point-blank range, they haven't really inflicted that much casualties. On the left, enemy pikes joined their last cavalry unit attacking my militia, so now my guys are in real trouble. The second unit fires at this melee, and at this distance they shouldn't really cause that much friendly fire, so if the first unit holds, we might be able to slowly grind enemy attack down. I also realize that enemy is sending infantry towards my square, and I try to get my men into cover behind the wall, but unfortunately it seems that there is some sort of invincible force field that prevents my men from using the side of the wall that would actually stop bullets. Curse you, wall! On the left flank, citizens of Warsaw are holding surprisingly well. Enemy cavalry tries to cycle charge our men, but the fire from the second unit breaks them, so now it's just the pikemen we must deal with. In the center, enemy line infantry storm the trenches without firing a single shot, and the fight there quickly turns into chaotic brawl when numbers will be most decisive factor, so I'm supporting my line with armed citizenry. We also managed to silence enemy artillery that was firing on the town hall where I placed my Albanians, so now I can keep them there without fear that the building may collapse on top of them. 
A few moments later, my men on the left actually managed to rout enemy pikemen, who decided they no longer want to fight in melee while being constantly under fire from just a few meters away. And now I'm able to use these two militia units to start enveloping main enemy force. Interestingly, Prussians seem aware of that and they placed a unit of infantry to protect the flank of their men fighting in the center. A smart move that will prevent me from supporting main melee. Far behind enemy main force, our Ruans just spotted enemy commander and are now going to try and take him out to deal a blow to enemy morale. I had hoped that we might be able to take him down in the initial charge, but it seems that General Schlobiton's guards are the same breed that Potocki's men, and they keep their commander safely in the back. But soon, bolstered by Potocki's support, my Ruans managed to eliminate Prussian general, and that's the strike that really breaks the morale of our enemies. Prussians didn't really show much spirit since the beginning of this battle, but this seemed to be the final straw. We've eliminated their commander, cavalry and artillery support, and now bulk of their main force are starting to run away. They will still hold on, locally, buying their comrades time to retreat, but with my cavalry free to roam around and attack isolated targets, it's just a matter of time before this battle is ours. And soon enough, it's over, and I'm both relieved and surprised that this battle, which I wasn't sure I could even win, proved to be... Well, easy. Granted, this was mostly due to poor decisions on Prussian's part, but still I've expected something slightly more even. As it stands, this battle commits one of the major sins of storytelling by being dangerously anticlimactic. But still, it doesn't mean that defenders of Warsaw shouldn't be proud of themselves because they've just bought us another turn to find a way to deal with our enemies. Here we are at the battle results, and as I said, they are far better than expected, but that doesn't mean we can rest now. The second army that Prussians sent before their attack is still out there, you can see them on the right of the screen there, and we don't really have means to take them out. In newer Total Wars, I could just march out with Potocki and he'd be joined on the battlefield by, sorry, by the garrison force, but it doesn't work like this in Empire. And there are still forces of General Dessau in Silesia to consider. But when they do move, they actually go around Wrocław, something I had not expected, and instead go for one of my farmlands in southern Pomerania and regroup there. It seems that my victories caused more damage than I thought, and Prussian armies are now running out of provisions after their capital was captured. They probably went for the farms to pillage the food stores to keep going, but that means they won't regain any territory this turn, and that's going to prove decisive in this war. As my turn begins, I start to think how to deal with those remaining armies. I check Poniatowski's force, but he's still waiting for fresh troops to reinforce him after Battle of Berlin. I'm going to spend what little money I have to request more troops for him, though I don't know how effective it's going to be since Poniatowski is now out of King's favor after disobeying orders. But soon I realize that even if Poniatowski's force would regain its full strength, the army of General de Sau, with many cannons, cavalry and pikes, is still something we couldn't take on, so we need another idea. And the idea came from the most unexpected place. Pavel Lempicki, the commander of Gdańsk City Watch, just convinced his men to attack the last Prussian stronghold, Königsberg. Now this seems like a suicide, especially when we count in remnants of General Schlobiton's force, who are going to support the garrison, but Lempiski is not going to fight this battle on his own. Potocki is going to take his small force and help with the assault, and his force is going to be vital there because he has cannons which we can use to open up breaches in the walls. I've also moved Poniatowski from Brandenburg, but his entire force is too slow and he won't make it in time. But I'm going to use every advantage I can get, so I'm going to send Poniatowski's cavalry and the man himself to join the fight. It may not seem like much, but once this cavalry get inside, they should be able to inflict some serious damage on the garrison. Even more so with the fact that this time enemy has no pikemen, so lacks any counter to our horsemen. We're still going to be heavily outnumbered, but this is our best shot at ending this war with Prussia right here, right now. Though, once again, it's going to be a tough one. I always knew he had it in him, the man bastard. And with our help, he might actually make it. Sir, this message from General Lempicki changes nothing. You have your orders in front of you. You and your men are to assist me in apprehending Stanislav Poniatowski and safely transport him back to Warsaw. Good lord, son. How on earth someone like you became captain of the Royal Guard? Can't you see Lempicki needs us in this assault? This is our best way out of this mess. A chance for peace. This is the only way you can avoid consequences of your frauds, General. Should you refuse, I was authorized to arrest you and take command of your forces to ensure my orders are carried out. Son, let me remind you that we are surrounded by a thousand armed men. My men. 
I pay them, not his highness, so please spare yourself embarrassment and do not make threats you cannot enforce. And besides, I'm not going to disobey orders from the king. You want Poniatowski? Then come with me to Königsberg and arrest him there. You know he's still in Brandenburg. Even if he received this message from General Lempitsky, his force would never reach Königsberg in time. Shows what you know about him. Think, Captain. The last daring charge for death or for victory. Poniatowski will never pass up on something like that. If his men are lagging behind, then he'll take those who won't slow him down. He may even come alone if need be, just so he could say that he took part in this battle. But he'll be there, I'm sure of it. Fine. I will go with you. But remember, General, it's you on the line if you're wrong. Sir, you cannot just take the cavalry and leave. The source Prussians... Wrong, Colonel. I can do whatever I want, since technically I'm outside of the law now. It's all here in this letter from the King. It states that I'm a traitor of the realm, and therefore you, my second in command, are to arrest me and transport me to Warsaw. But you're not going to do this, so please lower your sword. You're not going to arrest me because I'm going to win this war. And to do this, I need these cavalrymen. I could tell you more, but time is of the essence. So how about I make you a deal? I will leave now, and if I lose the coming battle without dying, I'm going to get back here so you can deliver me to the king in chains. Eh? Though, if we lose, he probably won't remain king for long. Do we have a deal? <laughs> Excellent. You can lower your muskets, lads. The colonel proved to be a man of wisdom. Now hurry up with those horses. I will not let the coward and the old man take all the glory. This is it. This is my chance. You can see the walls from here, and the scouts are reporting that Potocki and Poniatowski are already on the way. There's no turning back now. It's time for everyone to see that Pavel Lempicki is not just some city watchman, capable only of pushing merchants around while other men fight in this war. I may not be a born soldier, but I will show everyone I can fight and lead just like the best of them. To finally prove my worth to everyone. To gain honor and glory of the conqueror. To bring peace to my country. I, I must, must win, win this. this. As the battle starts, soldiers from both sides are approaching from all directions. Remnants of Schlobitan's force are entering the battlefield between my forces, so my plan is to rush my cavalry there as fast as I can to deal with those men before they can bolster the defenders. I won't be able to do anything about cavalry though, since my guys are too far away and they just won't be able to catch the enemy. I could, technically, go and block the gate with my men, but that would place me under musket and cannon fire, and I cannot afford to lose any men before we breach the walls. I am not too afraid of enemy cavalry, though, because firstly, they are really small in number after a failed attack in Warsaw, and secondly, because this time I am the one with the pikemen. As the enemy cavalry disappears inside the fort, my own horsemen are already attacking infantry that lags behind. And here we can see that even though Lempicki convinced his men to go into battle, they're still having doubts about all this. This company of provincial cavalry just stopped when they saw Prussians forming a square, and they had to be ordered to attack once again. Here we see Potocki once again ignoring his age and getting straight into the fight, but this time it's not going to be so easy because of the square that Prussians formed. Now, technically I should have ordered my guys to get out of there, but the square was so small that I hoped that attack from all directions would just grind it down in no time. But Prussians actually held on for surprisingly long, and here we can see why. It seems that after the Battle of Warsaw, enemy remnants were equipped with plug bayonets, a very dangerous development for my cavalrymen, who are now facing enemy armed with weapons specifically designed to counter cavalry. They won't be able to fire once they use these bayonets, but that's not very reassuring at this point. Still, I've decided to keep my cavalrymen there and just take the square down, and eventually my men manage to grind it down, but they've taken far more casualties than I'd like to while doing so. That means, though, that all supporting infantry have been routed, and we can now focus on the assault proper, but this battle just got a lot harder. After sending my cavalry back, my cannons began the long process of breaking down enemy walls. For a moment there it seems that Prussians are going to try to charge my guns with their small horse unit, but every time they ran outside they rode for about 50 meters then fell back into the fort. Not sure what they tried to do, but it meant that gates on this side were almost constantly open. It could have been something worth exploiting, if only I had enough men to actually, sorry, actually do anything about it. As it stands, enemy just ran back and forth and forced me to constantly keep an eye on them in case one of their attacks would happen to be a real one. A few minutes later, during another fake cavalry charge, we've managed to open the first breach, and the falling walls killed a good number of enemy soldiers there. 
And soon we've broken down another section of the wall with enemy militia units still on top of the gatehouse. And that means that these forces have no way of coming down to the ground level, so we've just effectively eliminated one of the enemy units from play without killing or routing it. To be honest, I've never seen such a situation in Empire, so I don't know what those troops could do right now. If they can still fire down on my men, then I've just handicapped myself, because now my guys won't be able to get up there and deal with them. And getting into firefight with enemies on top of the walls is a sure idea to get your own men killed. But for now, these men are just going to stand there without doing anything, and hopefully they won't cause me too much trouble. Much later, I've realized that trying to open a third breach on the other side of the fort simply wouldn't work this time. My gunners were so inaccurate that over the last 10 minutes or so they've only managed to hit a wall on Lempitsky's side only once or twice, so at this speed we would run out of time before that breach ever happened. Also, the game kind of forced my hand to get a move on. It's a classic Empire bug, where during sieges the game just starts to massively lag for no apparent reason. And it's not even lagging, strictly speaking. The game still walks at good 60 FPS, as mouse pointer and the moving camera show here, it's just that everything in the game just starts moving choppy. It's still manageable here, but I've had some battles where the game slowed down to something like one frame every second, and that makes it impossible to fight any battle. The game won't register your orders, simply trying to get units from A to B is a challenge, and most importantly, it almost always leads to a crash, and I've had enough of random trips to desktop for one episode, so it's time to get a move on. I'm going to send Lempitsky's force towards the Eastern Wall, while my two other infantry units from Potocki's force are going to keep Prussian attention focused on the West. Since enemies have already abandoned the Eastern Wall, it means that my militiamen would be able to climb the walls and open the gate to let my pikemen inside the fort. I thought for a second if the pikemen wouldn't be more needed on the walls, but then I realized that they probably wouldn't be able to make the climb while carrying a 6 meter pointy stick. The plan is working. The Prussians are so focused on protecting the breaches that they don't send a single unit to intercept my militia, who have just took over the gatehouse, or my pikemen, who are now going to rush inside the fort to attack their unsuspecting enemies. Only one unit of armed citizenry is firing at my men on top of the walls, but I'm not too concerned about it because their fire is so inaccurate that the only shots that hit are purely lucky ones. That and this unit is soon going to be attacked by my pikemen, so that should stop them from firing. Besides, my militia will soon be out of there because I've ordered them to just charge down the walls and pin down other two units of citizenry stationed on the southern wall because I don't want them shooting on the fort's courtyard where most of the fights will be taking place. Soon my pikemen start pouring into the fort and they're not even going to form up, they'll just charge straight into the fight hoping to stop as many units as they can from firing. And once enemy attention is focused on my pikes, my cavalry is going to use this distraction and just charge straight into the fort. There won't be any line battles or sniping or smart maneuvers. Right now, the plan is simple. Get inside the fort, get right into the enemy's face and stab them, club them or poke them with sticks. It's going to be a long, hard grind, but with enemy superior numbers we really cannot allow them to fire because it's a fight we're definitely gonna lose. The only chance here is to get into melee and hope that this garrison was last on the supply list when Prussian High Command handed out bayonets. And it seems that Prussians are desperate as well, as they just send a unit of cavalry, of all things, to deal with my pikemen. I think it might be delaying action, because they know their cavalry is all but useless inside the fort, so they just throw their horsemen at my pikes to give their units a chance to form up and prepare a volley that could devastate us at this close range. But now, as enemy troops are turning away from the breaches, my cavalry is going to storm in and just hack at everything in sight. And this move, this entire plan, is based on my hope that our enemies won't use their bayonets. And, as it turns out, they don't. I don't know if it's by design and garrison troops are unable to use plug bayonets, or if it's a bug, or if enemy commanders somehow decided that not using the bayonets would be a good idea, but whatever the reason, I'm not going to complain about that. My cavalry here are having doubts, after seeing just how many enemies are still inside the fort, but a quick and very impolite order from Potocki and Poniatowski sends them back into the fight. But now I've just realized that one unit of enemy armed citizenry is free to fire at my men in the courtyard, but I can't really do anything about it now, and this unit, despite its poor quality, is actually going to inflict surprising amount of casualties on my men. 
in the middle of the fort, my pikes just eliminated enemy cavalry, but are now under fire from line infantry unit placed at the center of the square, protecting the Prussian banner. A bit further, Albanian line infantry just managed to capture armory and now are going to use this nice elevated position to rain fire down on enemy troops still holding the center. And we're going to need this support fire because the second unit of Prussian line infantry just formed square, and that effectively blocks my cavalry from moving any further. But thankfully they formed this square too far from my horsemen, who can at least continue fighting with enemy militia. That also means that this square won't be going anywhere for now, and they won't be able to support their comrades in the center. Meanwhile, I'm ordering my only line infantry unit to form right next to the mass melee happening near the gates. The plan here is to set my men up and support the pikemen in the center by firing into the backs of enemy units that's still fighting them. As my men are preparing to fire, we receive news that enemy commander has just been killed. It's a good news, but this time it won't be enough to shake Prussian defenders. Now, finally my men fire, but it seems they're already way too tired after running into the fort, and they don't really score many hits. And all this time they're under fire from armed civilians stationed on top of the wall right above them, so when they fire they practically cannot miss. So I'm going to abandon this idea and just charge my men into the backs of enemy infantry. I'm sending my other pikemen there as well, hoping to surround the enemy, because if we can take down that unit in the middle, we'd be in command of the main square and enemy HQ, and that just might be enough to win this fight. Meanwhile, there's an absolute slaughter happening on the walls. Both enemy citizens and my militia are numerous, but they're not really trained for this kind of combat, and with both sides determined to win, the kill count is just terrifying. You can see between the men that the wall is almost completely covered in dead bodies. Back in the center, enemy infantry is now completely surrounded by my men, who are now charging into their own protected flank. I have to admit, though, that at this point I'm mostly grateful that the square near the second breach decided not to fire at anything at all, because with my men packed so tightly, every volley would have been painful. And here we can see just how determined these defenders are. Despite losing two-thirds of their unit, they still hold on, and let's be honest, they have a good reason for it. But there's really not much they can do at this point. My pikemen now trains them in melee, which means that my guys can just keep Prussians at a safe distance and wait for a good moment to strike. Though with so many pikes, it's enough for my men to just push and move slowly forward to crush the enemy between walls of metal. But that doesn't mean that the Prussians will just give up, and if you look at the numbers, you'll see that they've already killed over 500 of my pikemen. So, as I have expected, it's a slow, deadly grind for both sides, but right now the cold truth is that individual lives do not matter at this point. This single cavalryman seems to know that as he valiantly charges into the middle of my pikemen. He's just trying to distract my men to give his comrades a chance to attack, but it all ends just as expected and the meat grinder barely even noticed. Both sides know that this is win or die situation, so as long as we have some of our men alive at the end of this, then it's worth it. Near the gate, it's the same situation. Our cavalry is superior to enemy militia, but there's so much of the enemy that the battle is still proportionally even. The only reason we haven't been pushed away already is the fact that enemy line infantry still holds the square formation without firing. If they had joined this fight, it might have been enough to tip the balance, but instead they just sat there, and then I realized that maybe this was their way of surrendering. As we take down the last few survivors of enemy units in the center, we receive information I've been waiting for. Our men are now in command of the fort's HQ, and if we manage to hold it for just two minutes, it might be enough to force enemy to surrender. But now it seems that Prussians may no longer listen to reason, because they're clearly no longer fight to win, but to die fighting, and this unit is actually going to fight to the last man, something that happens very rarely in Total War games. Though, I don't think my men are going to show much respect to their brave opponents when the battle is done. And here we can see the last of the Prussians in the center falls, and my men are now free to tear down the Prussian flag and replace it with the white and red banner of the Commonwealth. I'm going to let my line infantry do this, while pikemen won't even have a minute to catch their breaths, because now I'm sending them to join the fight near the gate to prevent any enemies who may try to get back to HQ to remove my men from there. But, thankfully, Prussians were mostly focused on staying alive, and they haven't even noticed that their command center just fell into our hands. And now, as they slowly realize that it's our flag that flies above the fort, one by one they start throwing their weapons down, until, at last, their remaining officers order all their men to surrender. So that's it. The last official part of Kingdom of Prussia just laid down their arms.
As my men began to disarm the survivors, the three generals commanding my force let out a collective sigh of relief. They won. There's still many enemies to face, but they've just removed one of them from the map. Inside the fort, the men had only just realized what they've done, and that they're still alive. And as the cheer grew from a few weary grunts to a thundering scream that only those who came through hell alive are capable of, nobody noticed that one of the generals who led Commonwealth soldiers to this unexpected victory had mysteriously disappeared. Gentlemen, we must face the fact. We are losing control of this entire situation. The riots are getting out of hand, and every time it seems the crowds are ready to support our final push, one of the Triumviri does something unthinkable that calms people down. Don't look at me like that, one of newspapers in Warsaw came up with that name. We never should have allowed this. We must send our people to this newspaper and have some serious talk with the owner. We will do no such thing. The damage is already done and we must now focus on salvaging what we can, as fast as we can. Though, I have to admit, this was really a serious blow to our cause. Such catchy slogans are a perfect way to win crowds. But they were just lucky. Poniatowski couldn't have known that the Sau was ordered to bypass him and go straight for Warsaw. Potocki couldn't have known about the Zs that rampaged through Prussian camps and weakened them just before their attack. And nobody could have predicted that Lempicki will suddenly find his bravery and enough charisma to convince Grank's watchmen to march out. Surely the people will see that this is just coincidence and blind luck. Sir, you should know by now that people will believe in anything they're told. The crowds don't care if their heroes are smart, competent or just lucky, as long as they keep winning. And right now it seems that fortune favours our three friends, so we must walk even harder to counter that and focus public attention on our cause once again. But we will go back to this later. Right now I'd like to congratulate you on this action with Poniatowski. Sir, what action? Well, I have heard that Potocki took Captain of the Royal Guard to Königsberg with him to arrest Poniatowski after the battle is done. But he was, apparently, warned about that, and he disappeared immediately after the battle. I assumed it was your doing. Not mine, sir. Mine neither. Interesting. So perhaps some third party? Hmm, whoever did that just made a bold statement there, helping the man wanted by the king. We should divert some resources to find this person, or persons, perhaps they could be convinced to join our cause. But now, let us focus on undermining this triumvirate. We have a good starting point here. Information that Potocki clearly acted against Poniatowski. Now let's think how we can use it. Thank you all so much for watching The Crownless Eagle. We'll see what this victory over Prussians will bring us in the next episode. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like, writing a comment, or maybe even subscribe if you like. And if you didn't like it, leave a comment as well. Tell me what I could do better. See ya!